In 1972, President Richard Nixon visited the People's Republic of China in an event that shocked the world. The trip was part of the normalization process between the People's Republic of China and the United States after 20 years of disconnection during the Cold War. They had not diplomatically acknowledged each other since Mao Zedong and his Communist Party gained power in 1949. The two countries saw each other as threatening enemies due to diplomatic differences, including the U.S.'s recognition of Taiwan instead of the PRC. By the late 1960s, however, both countries realized a mutual need to improve relations in order to balance diplomatic power in the Cold War. As a result of suspicion in Cold War politics, the People's Republic of China and the United States began their diplomatic contacts slowly and secretively. Normalization between the PRC and U.S. emerged from both countries' careful execution of diplomatic risks, consequently allowing for a mutually beneficial relationship. Though normalization failed to completely resolve the issues of Taiwan and mutual distrust, the resulting relationship successfully changed the international power structure and allowed for a globally influential economic partnership. Immediately following World War II, the Cold War began between the Communist Soviet Union and the Democratic United States and their respective allies. In 1949, Mao Zedong and his Communist Party gained power in mainland China and allied with the Soviet Union. Rather than acknowledging Mao's government of the People's Republic of China, the U.S. supported the Democratic Nationalists in Taiwan in an effort to stop the spread of communism. In the early 1950s, the PRC and U.S. relationship continued to worsen when they directly fought against each other in the Korean War. Consequently, the PRC and U.S. never established normal relations, resulting in a period of diplomatic isolation between the two countries. However, Cold War politics caused the PRC and U.S. to reconsider their foreign policies. The Soviet Union and PRC split as the two countries differed in communist ideals and clashed in violent border conflicts. Mao hoped that normalization with the U.S. could pressure the Soviet Union into disengaging from aggressive diplomatic and military policies. Mao also knew a mended relationship with the U.S. could lead to increased international recognition. However, after the failure of the Cultural Revolution and other public policies, Mao's government was politically unstable. Therefore, initiating contact with the U.S. was risky, as Mao could not afford to appear weak. At the same time, the U.S. felt increased pressure to normalize relations as a way to suppress the Soviet Union's exportation of communism to satellite states and end the Vietnam War. The U.S. government hoped the PRC could facilitate a ceasefire with the North Vietnamese because the PRC militarily backed the North Vietnamese. However, the Democratic administrations of Kennedy and Johnson in the 1960s were unable to initiate contact without appearing soft on communism. In 1968, Republican Richard Nixon was elected president. Nixon openly opposed communism, meaning his patriotism would not be questioned when reaching out to the PRC. Nonetheless, Nixon's authority and public standing were undermined by his questionable management of the Vietnam War. Contact with the PRC was therefore politically risky, as he could not afford to further damage his image. Communication was difficult because the PRC and U.S. did not diplomatically acknowledge each other, and both Mao and Nixon wanted to keep normalization a secret. Nixon privately initiated communication with the PRC through his national security advisor, Henry Kissinger. In the fall of 1969, Kissinger asked an American diplomat in France to convey to a Chinese diplomat that Nixon had a secret message from Mao. The PRC's first premier, Zhou Enlai, managed the contact with Mao's approval, marking the beginning of normalization. The Pakistani government later became the middleman between the PRC and U.S. as Zhou and Kissinger conveyed further messages through Pakistani President Yahya Khan. The contact was kept secret. Nixon even refused to include the State Department fearing that political interference could publicize and damage the delicate normalization process. The first public sign of warming relations was displayed by the PRC and U.S. ping pong teams in 1971 at the World Table Tennis Championship. Soon after, the PRC government invited the U.S. players to visit for a friendly match. These players became the first group of Americans to publicly travel to the PRC in over two decades. In July 1971, Henry Kissinger flew to Pakistan under the pretense of visiting Pakistani President Yahya Khan, but secretly continued on to the PRC. For the first time in 20 years, high-level PRC and U.S. diplomats met face-to-face -face and discussed diplomatic and ideological differences. The trip paved the way for President Nixon to publicly visit the PRC on February 8, 1972, surprising the Chinese and American publics and the international community. Nixon took a political risk by flying to Beijing, as Mao did not confirm a personal meeting until after Air Force One arrived. Upon landing, Nixon greeted Zhou Enlai with a handshake that demonstrated a renewal of relations. 
Mao and Nixon met once and discussed the issues and futures of their countries. Zhou Enlai and Henry Kissinger privately wrote the Shanghai Communique, which stated that both sides agreed to disagree on ideological differences and acknowledged the PRC as a legitimate government. However, it did not clarify whether the PRC or Taiwanese government was the true representation of China. Mao and Nixon signed the communique at the end of Nixon's week-long visit, taking a significant step towards normalization. The normalization process was stalled through the mid-1970s as Mao's death and Nixon's resignation dominated internal affairs. Normalization was finalized during the Carter administration. President Jimmy Carter signed the joint communique of 1979 to acknowledge the government of the PRC as the true representation of China. The same year, the U.S. granted the PRC the most favored nation status, allowing the PRC the best position for trade with the U.S. These steps paved the way for the PRC and U.S. diplomatic and economic relationship to become mutually important and internationally significant. Because the PRC and U.S. were two major world powers, the new relationship changed the balance of global power. Through normalized relations, the PRC gained global recognition. In 1971, the PRC replaced Taiwan in the United Nations. Furthermore, after the U.S. recognized the PRC over Taiwan in 1979, more than 12 other nations followed suit, fulfilling the PRC's wish to be internationally recognized. Through the process of normalization, Cold War power also shifted. The Soviet Union became more willing to negotiate with the PRC. Consequently, the Sino-Soviet border conflicts lessened, reducing political tensions. The Soviet Union also negotiated with the U.S. to decrease weapon supplies through the Strategic Arms Limitation Treaties of 1972 and 1979. The diplomatic relationship between the PRC and U.S. successfully curtailed Cold War friction and hostility, thus reducing the threat of nuclear war. As a result of their normalization, trade between the PRC and U.S. exploded from virtually no economic interaction to $5 billion in 1980 and $457 billion in 2010. By 2009, the U.S. was the PRC's top trading partner, while the PRC was the U.S.'s number two trading partner. The U.S. now depends on loans from the PRC, as the PRC currently owns $755.4 billion in U.S. Treasury securities. This economic partnership was coined Chimerica by Neil Ferguson, a Harvard University historian. Chimerica is a word that simply conveys the idea that the most important thing in the world today is the symbiotic relationship between two economies, China's and America's. Chimerica is responsible for about a third of the world's economic output and more than half of international economic development since 2000. With Chimerica's economic strength, it has become a power in worldwide economics and globally significant. Despite the success of normalization, the diplomatic process did not create complete agreement and the relationship remains delicate. In June 1989, the PRC government suppressed the Tiananmen Square protests, resulting in U.S. outrage. The U.S. immediately enacted sanctions and suspended visits between diplomats and military leaders while the PRC strongly protested the sanctions. However, the diplomatic crisis was alleviated by secret talks between high-level politicians. The two countries have continued the secrecy of normalization to mitigate their public differences. Diplomatic negotiations have also failed to fully solve the conflict involving Taiwan, a major issue for the PRC. Though the U.S. acknowledges that the PRC is the true representation of China, the U.S. continues to support Taiwanese independence. In 2008, the U.S. sold $6.4 billion of military equipment to Taiwan. In protest, the PRC suspended all military contact with the U.S. for eight months. The combination of carefully executed secret and public diplomacy allowed for the success of the normalization between the People's Republic of China and the United States. The normalization opened diplomatic and economic contact after 20 years of silence, though there continue to be unresolved differences. The vital relationship between these superpowers needs to be managed carefully, as it will continue to be the most important relationship in the years to come.